Hi. Um, we all love our coffee here in um, wonderful Melbourne. Um, the story is coffee is about to get really, really, really expensive. As coffee is a cornerstone of the hospitality industry, will this damage our economic recovery? Gosh, uh, <laughs> petrol, now coffee, where will, uh, where will it end? Look, uh, I'm sure for many who can't afford a, a coffee can be a, a luxury, a takeaway coffee, but I think Australios indicates there, this is also a, uh, you know, a, a jobs creator. If people stop buying coffee, uh, this becomes a bigger issue. Melinda, let me come to you first on this. Um, what would happen if coffee hit, as some have suggested, $7 a cup? Well, look, I have to say, that's a crisis here in Melbourne. We all know it. Um, <laughs> I think we'd, it, would, it would be pretty serious for all of us and we'd be thinking about all the things we'd have to substitute so that we could still get our $9 cup of coffee first thing in the morning. So... $9? It's already gone up since I asked the question. <laughs> well, there we go. Inflation already. But, uh, you know, I think that's the critical thing. We all know it's pretty, pretty hard to substitute coffee, so I'm going to be getting rid of a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, to make sure that I can afford the, the heart starter in the morning. But it is uh, uh, symbolic of what's happening right across the board. How serious is this cost of living pinch right now? Oh, look, you know, I think for most of you in the audience, um, anyone who's, who's going shopping on a regular basis um, has noticed how prices are increasing and, and, you know, what you're being asked to pay for when you, when you go to, you know, click pay mm. and hit your card. So it is a, it is a really significant issue. Um, there's clearly some prices of goods um, and things like fuel um, that we've seen a really significant spike and what people are trying to figure out is, is that temporary um, or is it going to be sustained and, and flow through? But I think the short... And is there an answer to that? Is that clear? Look, I think the short answer is um, that inflation is going to be higher than what we've seen for a while and mm. it's going to be higher for longer. Um, so where, how high, I think, is the question that everyone's, you know, grappling with. But we need but, to get used to this. Yeah, absolutely. So, Bronnie, what are you noticing at Ozharvest? Well, the challenge is that vulnerable people get hit first mm -hmm. and get hit the hardest. And we're already seeing that. One in six Australians currently suffer from food insecurity. I mean, that is according to the Food Bank Hunger Report. So that is... Horrendous. These people are already having to make choices hmm. around rent, around shopping, and around medical supplies. Now it's fuel, and it's about choosing what do they give up on. And so this is going to be an enormous crisis, an enormous challenge. Dan Tien, let me ask you, in your electorate, where you are, what's the biggest cost of living pressure or concern that, that people raise with you? Uh, the biggest uh, would be around fuel, David. Um, they realise that uh, since the illegal uh, and immoral evasion by Russia of Ukraine, we've seen a big spike in the fuel price. And given the distances that, that people need to drive, whether it's to get to work, uh, whether it's to take kids to, to sport on the, on the weekend, um, it, that, that would be the biggest impact that it's uh, that the inflation's having in um, in regional and rural areas. So, what do you hope the budget on Tuesday will do about it? Uh, look, uh, the, the budget uh, obviously will will look at addressing uh, cost of, of living issues. We're absolutely aware that's one of the pressures on household budgets. Uh, it would also make sure that we can continue um, to drive a, a strong economy, continue uh, to provide employment, because obviously having everyone in a job uh, helps to deal with these cost of, of living pressures. So we'll want to focus on that as well. And a strong economy also enables us to provide the, the services, whether it be the health services, the education services. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. To but just, just on sure fuel you've nominated as the biggest issue in, in your electorate when it comes to cost of living. Do you want to cut in fuel excise? Well, look, uh, the budget will be delivered on next Tuesday by the Treasurer. Well, you might say that. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to... There, there is another, there is another in, solution, uh, though. In, in any way, he's a, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine and okay. I don't want to ruin that, uh, that friendship. But, look, uh, we're absolutely aware uh, that cost of living is something that, that we've got to deal with. Obviously, with what we've done over the last two years, it's been a key focus. It's why we've provided over $30 billion worth of tax cuts, you know, $10 billion per annum into, into childcare, driven yeah. electricity prices down by 8% over the last two years. So I it thought you might say all that as well. So a <laughs> focus of the government. OK, sorry. Omar, you were just... Yeah, I was just going to suggest in. there's another obvious uh, solution, Dan, to 
uh, the, the, the impact on families of high fuel prices, and that's to break that reliance on fuel. Uh, and I guess uh, as an owner of an electric vehicle for the last four years, I'm lucky enough to be able to afford one. But I know that uh, is just not available for so many Australians. Uh, and, you know, is there going to be anything in the budget uh, that's going to make electric vehicles more accessible to more Australians so that we can uh, break our reliance on these increasingly expensive fossil fuels and, of course, uh, deal with this... Uh, uh, it's not impending anymore, is it? It's, it's a right here, right now reality of climate change. That's a pretty good question, Dan Turner. <laughs> It is a good question, and um, it's one that we, we do have to deal with. We've got to deal with uh, here and now, and the here and now, especially in, out in regional and rural Australia, is the majority of people will drive um, uh, petrol cars or they'll drive d diesel cars, so we've got to take that into account. But we've also got to look at what's happening um, as more and more people do purchase But you can change the policy vehicles. setting standard to, take, the... to increase the take-up of EVs, is the point. I, not to speak for the doctor, but well, you can well, change Terry, the policy it, it, settings to Terry, make, have the take-up of EVs. Okay, You've got to Terry. admit that they won't ruin the weekend first, though, of course, mate. <laughs> OK, let's just finish uh, the uh, answer there, Terry, Minister. I, I, let's... Terry, let's have a deal. I won't interrupt you. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> not you interrupt me. And I think then we'll have a very good conversation. I'm happy for you to have your turn right. when it's, well, when look, it's your I'm, turn. I'm not going to be paid to any deal. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep interrupting. Um, sorry, finish that, finish that you answer there. keep interrupting, David, Thank you. I just feel the, oh, so finish the response I because I think mm. it's a um, very important uh, question and one I'd like to focus on because if you come down to Western Victoria and go to Deakin University, their Warrnambool campus, the government is investing in very important research there to us to be able to drive hydrogen um, when it comes to buses, when it comes to, to trucks, because in regional and rural Australia, long-haul transport is absolutely key to, to how we, we transition. And the federal government is investing heavily in that so that we can make sure when it comes to buses and trucks, okay. they can be powered okay. on hydrogen. But, but... And we've got the workforce to be able to force okay. it. If you look at what we're doing at Portland Aluminium, the biggest use... OK, we're getting a bit away from, from the electric vehicles question. We're, we're looking at <laughs> how Minister. we can power that by hydrogen. So... Okay. OK, uh, we're just getting it's a little plenty, bit away from the, um, the, the question uh, from Omar Khorshid was about um, uh, subsidies for electric vehicles. Terry Butler, what do you think the government should be doing about either fuel prices or, or coffee prices? What should they be doing? Well, look, you can't have a meaningful discussion about cost of living unless you acknowledge that wages have flatlined in this country for far too long. We have to address the fact that wages are languishing. That's absolutely crucial. If you want to talk about costs going up, it seems like everything is going up except people's wages. So we have to address that question. We'll, we'll, come, to, we'll to come to wages a little later, well, but, but on, on, on these the prices, two, David, is respect. there anything government can do about these prices? What you can do about EVs, as, as has been pointed out, is you can change the policy settings to increase the take-up of them. And we've got policies to do that. Uh, the Queensland government has policies to do that. It's happening around the country. Most governments are doing it. This government has a prejudice against electric vehicles for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, and before the last election, they were telling us that we we're going to ruin the, the weekend by promoting them. I mean, this, this is the sort of nonsense that we have passing for public policy in this country. David, if we could come back to the cost of living pressure, the question around, you know, we've picked a couple of things. We've talked about price increases. There are definitely some temporary aspects to this, which I think is why we're having conversations around temporary measures in the budget. Mm. Um, but I think that whether it's price increases or whether it's interest rate increases, which we're going to see, household budgets are going to be under more pressure than they have been for a while. One of the things that you see always when interest rates increase, when price pressures increase, is the second income earner comes in. Uh, so people either look for a job when they haven't as a second income earner in the family, or they look to work more hours. The thing that can't be escaped here is the need to look at childcare again. I know there were measures in the last budget, but particularly for low income households, childcare is a huge cost. It's gonna be something that they're looking at, not just this week, next month, next year. It's gotta be something that's looked at.